Let's bring in Maryland Congressman and former House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer joining us from the Capitol. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. You already, I know, cast your first vote under the new speaker. Tell me, do you think this is someone Democrats can work with? Uh, I don't know Mike Johnson very well. He's been elected speaker. Uh, he's relatively new uh, and hasn't been in the leadership before. So, frankly, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but uh, I think the, his speech today uh, was a speech that talked about working together to reach common ground. Yes, we'd have differences, and I thought that was uh, good. Uh, but as I told him, uh, that is easy to say, it's hard to do. And very frankly, his record uh, over his uh, time in the Congress of the United States has been a very hard-edged message uh, that will not create uh, bipartisanship. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, he, he said good things, and I hope that he follows through on those. And if he does, as uh, Leader Jeffries indicated, he will get a positive response uh, from Democrats. We want to work together. Uh, and frankly, we did work together, and uh, we saw uh, that we uh, didn't allow the America to, to uh, default on its debts. Uh, we made a, an agreement on what funding levels would be for the coming year, and we did not shut down the government. Uh, all of those were o over 300 votes on those. And on Ukraine, we have had seven votes uh, that had over 300 votes. So we've had a bipartisan, constructive coalition working together. And I hope the new speaker follows uh, that uh, trajectory uh, and doesn't uh, serve simply the hard right on his party, as his record would reflect. But I want to give him the, the benefit of the doubt. I had a conversation with him. It was very brief, but it was very positive. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Congressman, a lot of folks have made the point uh, that he doesn't have enough experience to have enough enemies to block his path to the gavel. I don't know if you agree with that, but did you have to Google Mike Johnson this morning? Uh, I don't think I Googled it, but my staff gave me a memo, <laughs> but uh, honestly. But the fact of the matter is, uh, yes, he's new, and I think your point is absolutely correct. He hadn't made enough enemies, as, as obviously others had. After all, the Republicans went through their speaker, their majority leader, and their whip, their three highest officers, and rejected all of them. Uh, and that's... Uh, uh, gives you somewhat of a sense of the challenge that he faces on his side of the aisle. And it took uh, four uh, different people uh, to win the speakership. Uh, the first one uh, was, and the second one were hard right. Uh, and the third one was more towards the center. And he lasted for four hours before Donald Trump uh, told his followers, uh, reject him, and he dropped out. And then we came yeah. to Mike Johnson, who, as you point out, nobody has a lot of record on him. So, uh, uh, but the record that we do have is he's uh, very conservative, and therefore I think was obviously uh, from uh, the Republicans' uh, standpoint acceptable to the Freedom Caucus. Obviously, they all voted for him, uh, but that gives some pause for concern because they do not represent the American people and do not represent the overwhelming majority of Americans who want to see the Congress work together. Uh, so many of their candidates said, I don't want to work with Democrats. And uh, I hope this, this uh, new speaker, Speaker Johnson, does want to work with people who will work with him to achieve positive objectives for the American people. Well, let's talk about some of those items that we're going to need bipartisan support for to see this Congress get them through. The first will be the most immediate, a November 17th potential government shutdown. Now, Speaker Johnson came out and he said he would potentially put on the floor a continuing resolution for January or April. What are you hearing regarding that stopgap measure? Well, I, I, what you just said, he sent out a letter. Uh, he indicated that uh, we would probably have to have or that he would probably support a uh, continuing resolution to keep the government open. That's a positive step. Now, whether he can deliver on that, we'll see. Unfortunately, he has voted against most of the uh, CRs that have been on the floor in the con continuing resolutions, keeping government funded uh, in the past. So it's not a very uh, uh, hopeful sign that he has voted against those in the past. Hopefully, he will understand shutting down the government is a stupid thing to do. 
Uh, we avoided it under Speaker McCarthy, but only with the votes of a majority of Democrats and uh, about 20 less uh, Republicans, but we did avoid it. And hopefully uh, Speaker Johnson will lead us to that same end. It was an interesting moment last evening, uh, Congressman, when Congressman Johnson became uh, speaker nominee. He held a very quick news briefing, if we can call it that, flanked by a, a large number of Republican members. And a reporter tried to ask him about his attempt to overturn the 2020 election results. That reporter was met with boos and uh, was told to shut up by another Republican member. This is something that was Miss Fox. That's going I to be that. an issue. That's absolutely, I mean, absolutely right. Virginia Fox told her to shut up, and then she was not a allowed to ask another question. Is that going to be the future here for this Republican conference? Every member of the Republican conference voted for this individual who was an election denier. Congressman, how do you work with that? It's sad. It's sad that an election denier, it's sad that Donald Trump, charged with numerous crimes, and now his chief of staff apparently saying that they informed him that what he was saying was wrong, uh, and his pursuit of that effort has led a lot of people into legal trouble, including himself. Uh, and this, uh, the new speaker, was an election denier, as you say, wrote a, uh, uh, an opinion uh, that uh, Chip Roy, a member of the Freedom Caucus, former uh, attorney, uh, deputy attorney general or assistant attorney general in the state of Texas, said was constitutionally wrong. Uh, so uh, that's, a, that's an area of concern. But as I say, he's new. He hasn't been in leadership. We'll have to see what he does. We know what he's said in the past. We know what he's done in the past. Uh, and if he goes down that route, that hard right route, then I think uh, he, he's in for a rough time. Uh, and we're not going to get to the bipartisanship that he talked about and that uh, Leader Jeffries talked about. So hopefully he now sees with the responsibility of running the entire House, not just a faction of the House, uh, seeks out uh, to uh, come together and have agreements that can have a positive result on our legislative record positive result in helping people and a positive result in keeping the government open and operating. And um, I might, might also, add, my, I might add, and supporting Ukraine as well as supporting Israel. Well, you led me right there, Congressman. I want to talk about both of those packages. Take a listen to what Speaker Johnson had to say about Israel. Our nation's greatest ally in the Middle East is under attack. The first bill that I'm going to bring to this floor in just a little while will be in support of our dear friend Israel, and we're overdue in getting that done. Congressman, how is your colleagues in the Democratic Party, party dealing with the Israeli skeptics on the progressive wing? Well, let me say, we only had, uh, I think, 10 votes uh, opposed to, to the bill, 400 plus uh, members of the House of Representatives voted for that. So the overwhelming number of Democrats and Republicans voted for the resolution. And, and, and I was smiling because he says that was going to be the first bill that he would bring to the floor. Frankly, that bill would have come to the floor three weeks ago had it not been for the internal division and divisiveness and dysfunction of the Republican Party who couldn't select a leader. So that it's ironic that he claims credit for that being the first. Of course it was the first uh, because it was so important that we pass it three weeks ago in support of our very strong ally Israel uh, who was uh, in invaded and a, and a carnage was committed uh, and an act of war by Hamas. Who, that is a terrorist organization. So yes, he brought it to the floor because over 400 members were for it and had co-sponsored it. So I'm glad he brought it to the floor. It was the right thing to do. Uh, and it, and I, as I say, it's never too late to do the right thing, and he did the right thing. Congressman Steny Hoyer of Maryland. Anne -Marie, I, I was just going to add, yes, Anne Marie sir. asked me a direct question. The overwhelming number of Democrats yeah. uh, voted for this uh, piece of legislation. We always appreciate an answer, Congressman. Thank you for your time today and bringing the Democratic point of view on a very important story. We have a Speaker of the House after 22 days without.